one, the biggest enemy that mankind fear is death. But must realize as ancient believers that, that Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, he's already defeated death. So you should not be afraid of death. Amen. It is that we must realize that only God knows the time span that he will give each and every man a woman on the earth. Yes, yes things transpire in life that really um, try to come upon us and actually, um, you know, cause us to forfeit or shorten our time here. But one thing that really prevents people from actually moving forward is fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of what has not transpired. Fear of the what if, the fears. And fear itself has taken control of hearts and minds and people to the point they do not venture out and move even further. Now, I say some believe the word of God tells us that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. He said those that keep their mind stayed upon him, they're keeping in what? Perfect peace. Perfect peace. So think about this here. Fear comes in to rob you of your peace. Yes. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. But peace come in to dispel fears. Yes. Because when is you what happened is fear is that you're now placing more respect and authority on that which you think would happen that has not happened and may never happen. Yes. But because you have given it preeminence, you've given it authority in your life, so therefore it dominates you. And we know as mankind that we don't like being dominated. We don't like yes. taking advantage of, you know. We don't like to feel inferior or weak. But that's what fear comes in to do. But we must realize this here that when you know that the Lord is, and this is what we have to understand, you have to know who the Lord is. Amen? You must understand that he is, you know, he says that he's your light and your salvation. Yes. Amen? Amen? So he the lights of your path. He gives you guidance. Amen. He brings you, um, you know, a brightness to your consciousness. He gives you, you know, a new hope and ambition and desires. Amen. When, just think about this here. That fear comes in to bring you darkness. Because it clouds your judgment. It clouds your ability to move forward and advance. That's what fear does. So therefore you don't have light for the next step of life. Amen. But God said he is the light of your salvation. Now, your salvation is an all-inclusive term, is that there's so much wrapped in the salvation that you may never comprehend. We shared it a few weeks ago, is that we must realize that salvation is a total package. There are more than the salvation than you can ever imagine. And see, this one said, he's the Lord, you know, you know, and your salvation, you're like your salvation. So therefore, he is the savior. He's the redeemer. He's the healer. He's the protector. He's the leader. He's the guide, amen. He's the sustainer of life. This is who he is. And so we must get to know who this Lord is. Amen? Amen. I love what David said because he said the Lord is. Let's start right there. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Mm -hmm. The script of my life whom I share fear. Uh -huh. He talks about fear a couple of times in this year. But yes. we must realize that, that it, it, situations comes up to do just that. To strike fear in your heart. To prevent you from moving forward because you got to realize that we talk about the flesh, yes. you know, the world, and we talk about the devil. Mm -hmm. Neither one of them has preeminence, neither one have authority over your life. They only have the authority and preeminence of your life that you give it. Mm -hmm. yes. That you give it. Amen? Amen? And this is where you must realize that who you want to give that preeminence to. Mm -hmm. When we say that Jesus Christ is our Lord, that means that we're giving him preeminence. Yes. We're giving him authority. We're giving him the power. We give him the right to, to lead us, to guide us, you know. We give him the right now to oversee and govern, you know, our lives. When we say that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes. Whether or not you want him to be Lord, he's still Lord. Right. Right. Whether or not you want him to be king, he's still king. Amen. 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 But he wants to do just that because he has such a great array of hope for us, but only if we would do what? Trust him. Only we would believe in him. And so therefore, you have to constantly remind yourself on a daily basis of who the Lord is. Constantly remind yourself because you're constantly going to be bombarded with different things that are going to come up in your life to do just what the enemy, amen, has, you know, desired to do. To rob, steal, kill, and destroy but a lot of times, it's not the enemy that robs, steal, kill, and destroy. 
is you and your faith and believing and knowing who God is. Because the enemy cannot control you. The enemy can't force you to do anything. He cannot force you to do anything. Just watch this here. Not only him, but not even God's going to force you to do something that you don't desire to do. If you don't desire to trust God, God's not going to force you to trust him. Amen. Amen. If you don't want to believe in God, he's not going to force you to believe in him. He's just going to, and one thing I, I love about God, praise God, amen, is that he says his goodness. Amen. amen. His goodness. Amen. This is goodness. He just, in other words, he said, I'm going to just keep on being good to you, hope that you will realize how good I am and that you will give way to me. Yeah. Amen. And I'm just going to be good to you. Maybe you will realize, you know what, God's been doing so many great things. Why don't I trust him? Why don't I learn more about him? Paul says he wants us to grow in the heights and the whips and the depths of him. He wants, he wants us to get to know him. And one thing about it is that he has given it to us. Yeah. He's given us in his word. He's letting us know who he is and what he can do. And, and he gives us so many different you know, ways what he has done through time past. Amen. You, you don't realize when you read this Bible, when you go back there, amen, to Genesis and you get what God has done with those individuals back there, amen, is that even I was being very compassionate and merciful to Adam and not really going on and killing when he could have killed him, amen, but giving an opportunity, amen, to show where he was. God was being merciful, amen. He's a merciful God. And this is what the psalmist says. This is 106 that, you know, you know, you know, you know for, his, for, for his goodness and his mercies endures forever. His goodness and his mercies endures forever. Amen? And this is what you have to constantly remind yourself. And so this is what David says there, because we must understand that fear has a cause. It has a purpose. It has a purpose. And fear, it comes to paralyze you. You hear about how a lion, when he roars, amen, he has not chased, amen. He has not pawed or clawed, amen. But he just roar. His roar, amen. And his roar is so loud. And what it does, it paralyzes. It paralyzes, amen, the intended victim. Praise God, amen. It paralyzes the intended victim, amen. And so, therefore, the dependent victim, what he's done now, the prey, amen, because the lion is looking for prey, amen? amen. It's looking for prey, P-R-E-Y, amen? It's looking for, you know, someone that he can take advantage of and devour, amen? That's why the word declares that the enemy walks as a what? Roaring lion. And therefore, what he's doing, he is roaring. And what happens if you realize that he's just roaring, and you have to feel the roar. Amen? Mm -hmm. You have to feel the roar because once you give into the roar, amen, you now are subjected to whatever he's going to try to come upon you and actually do. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. So don't allow COVID-19 roar. Yeah. Don't allow it to it roar to, yeah. to, to stop you from worshiping God. Right. Right. It's amazing, amen? It's amazing as you see a lot of churches are not as full. Yes, they're talking about social distancing thing that they there. When God is all all of this time and tells them to come together, touch and agree, and that kind of thing in his name, and it shall be done. What happened to touch and agree? Huh? What happened? That's why the word said, forsake not the assembly yourself of other things and believe. Fear, God. Fear, Amen. Fear, fear. The roar, the roar, COVID 19 roar has paralyzed you. And now, therefore, you know. You, you, you don't come to worship God no more. Yes. You don't come together. Why? Because you're trying to save your life. My, my, my. Your life is not yours to save. Sure. Let me just give you that. I, I wanted to get back into Romans this morning, but I guess I won't get there this morning here. Amen. But, but we must realize this here. Is that when, as when people have been put in place and put in office, just like we just had, you know, Weinstein. He comes here to build, amen, and he wants to, um, you know, get a position where he can actually just, you know, fend for the people. Mm -hmm. And you have to read your word and understand that. See, this is what the um, children of Israel asked for back there during the time of Saul. Mm -hmm. The actual king, amen, for they want someone that they can actually physically see, amen. But even though we have this political office in Asia, 
But we have to keep mindful that we have a king. Yes, yes we do. That's right. Our king name is Jesus. Yes, Amen. King of Amen. Amen. He's King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Watch this here. Is that no man can really protect you. True. Amen. 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 See, this is what the Psalms, go back to the Psalms. Go back to, you know, go back to Psalm 27. Let's just rest this for a moment. Come on, let's go here. Just, just get to Psalm 27. I, kind of, I, I, I know it verbatim, but I really want to suggest to really examine this thing, really look at this here. And look what he says. Amen. Listen to what he says here. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it's amazing because, watch this here. If we understand this, is that what David does in just the first three verses, amen, he shows where his confidence really lets that. Amen? And it's not in man, it's not in horses, not in chariots. Amen? This is what he says, the Lord is. Amen? The Lord is. So he stopped right there. Before he goes any further, he had to actually identify who the Lord was. Amen. And now he declares who the Lord is. We declare that he is Lord, that he is Lord of Lords, that he is King of Kings, that he is God Almighty, that he is able to do exceedingly above all that sort of thing. Amen. We, we, we said that he's a God that is able to protect us, to lead us, and the God is all truth and right. We said that he's there. But we have to identify the person who the Lord is going to govern, lead, and God. So David said here now, he said, the Lord is mine. Yes. Mine. Man. In other words, he made it personal. Yes, sir. He made it personal. So I don't know what he is to you, but I know what he is to me. Amen. Amen. I don't know, and I, and I heard what he did for others, but I mean, I want to let you know what he did for me. Amen. Amen. So, but he said that the Lord is my, amen, my light. In other words, he's the brightness of my day. Right. He is the brightness of my countenance. Amen. He is the one that gives life to my every, every move, my every action. He's the one that gives light to it. Amen. In other words, he gives you light for the next step. Amen. A lot of times, you know, I got one of high power flashlights where you can look way down the road. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you get to look so far that you miss a step in front of you. Yes. yes. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Yes. You're looking so far down the road that you don't really pay attention. Amen. To the step in front of you. Yes. And a lot of times when you don't, when you're looking so far down the road, not looking at the next step before you, is that you can what stumble and fall. Mm -hmm. Amen. I mean, just last week here, my wife and I was going to the county to get some stuff for Grace Hill Academy, man. You're in the West Palm Beach area. Uh, Grace Hill Academy, my daycare over there. Is that, and, and I'm walking, amen. I'm walking with her alongside me and everything else. And, and the pavement was lifted up. But by me looking so far down, rather than taking a step in front of me, kind of, you know, up my toe a little bit of my shoe. But, you know, called me to stumble when I did not fall. Amen. Caused me to stumble. Because what? And now watch this here now. Once that happened, my focus had to shift. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? My focus had to shift is where that I no longer was looking so far down the line. Mm -hmm. I now was paying more attention to what's in front of me. Mm -hmm. And see, this is what David had to actually realize as well. You got to look and see who's in front of you. Right. Amen? You have to look and see who's who's surrounding you. You have to look and see who's protecting you. Who is your shield and your buckler? Who is your strong tower? Who is your very present up in the time of trouble? Who is King of Kings? Who is Lord of Lords? Who is the great I am? Who is he? He's the Lord God Almighty. Amen. He's strong and mighty in power. Amen. He's the Lord God Almighty, who he is and was and is to come. He is the Lord, holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, who he is and was and he is to come. He is, amen. You're God of God and kings of kings. He's Lord of all lords. Amen. amen. So David says here, the Lord is my life. Amen. And he goes on to say my salvation. Now, we covered salvation a few weeks ago. Amen. You kept salvation. And salvation itself is all inclusive. It's so much wrapped up in salvation. And so you've got to realize this here everything that pertains to life and godliness is in salvation. Amen? Amen. 
Everything that pertains to life and godliness is in salvation. Amen. So in other words, salvation means saved, yes. delivered, yes. protected, yes. amen, set free, yes, Lord. all this stuff, you know, blessed, healed. Yes. Just think about it. All this is salvation. Everything that we need that pertains to life is in salvation, is in this plan, is in this package that God has so graciously put together through his son, Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. It's in here. But what happens is this here is that many people really don't check the tenets of the contract. They don't know what's all in the contract. They don't know what all God has said he will actually do for us. And then again, when you read it, you may not believe it. Yes. And this is what happened. Right. Many people don't believe it. That's right. They don't believe that he is who he said he is. They don't believe, you know, that they do what they say they can do. You're right. And so believing meaning that you must have faith in believing that God is who he said he is. Yes, right. And that he would do what he said he would do. Yes, now, the Hebrew writer says without faith is impossible to please God. Right. So understanding that pleasing God means that the pleasure of God does not really manifest in your life. Because what? You don't believe that he can do it. Right. Wow, oh, man. Amen. This is what David is letting us know. David letting us know here that I don't care whatever is going on around me because when it goes to the Father, he said, even when my enemy, my foes come upon me to eat of my flesh, he already declared that they what? They stumble and fear. He said, no one holds the captain against me. My heart should not fear. Huh? That's what, am I right? Am I in that? Is that what it says? I just want, I, you know, I'm just checking. He said, no war rise against me in this, in this. What is this? The salvation of the Lord. That the Lord is my salvation. You see, I'm confident. In other words, you have to put, you, you have to have confidence that God can do what he said it would do. Yes, he do. Wow, he did. man. He did. You must have confidence in God. Amen? Amen. Wow, I'm about to mess y'all up right now. People put more confidence in COVID-19 yes. than they do in God. That's for real. They put more confidence. You have to believe that COVID-19 can do what COVID-19 has done. Right. Yeah. You must believe that it can happen to you. Huh? So, which one is stronger? Which one is mightier? Is your God mightier? Or COVID-19 mightier? Huh? Okay. Both of them take trust and take faith. Can I go a little further with you? Yes. Amen? You, have, you put trust and faith in so many different things. And don't even know you put trust and faith in them. Men came inside down. You put trust and faith in that seat. Because what? It healed you before. So in other words, you and that chair have gotten acquainted. Amen? I'm almost done. You and that chair have gotten acquainted. Amen? And the thing about this here, just think about the countless chairs that you sit in. Amen? And a lot of them chairs, you don't even know those chairs. Amen? But because you sat in the chair before, you came what? You sat down in another chair because what? You put confidence that this chair has been designed to do what? To hold you, to support you. Amen? So you put confidence, you will realize, I mean, just this is a simple thing that we put confidence in and not really knowing whether or not we can trust him or not. But because you have sat in one chair and said that chair held you, you didn't check the weight restriction on the chair whatsoever, but you just what? You plopped down right in that chair. It's what you did. Why? Why is it that we can put so much confidence in material things that we can put confidence in God? This one thing, and this I'm confident of. Amen? And so, in other words, David says this here. I pray that you have confidence in God. This is what he's saying. He just doesn't know from his life story. He said, I had enemies, I had foes. Yeah, they came upon me, eat of my flesh. 
But because the God I have confidence in, they stumble and they fail. Doing host and camping against me. All round about me. My heart should not fear. Because what? I have confidence in the Lord. I have confidence that he can lead me, that he can guide me, that he can protect me, that he is my city, great reward, that he is my shield and my buckler, that he is my strong tower, that he's the God that forgives all of my iniquities and heal all of my diseases. That's confidence. Amen? That's confidence. So that's what David wants you to have today. And I, and I pray that, you know, just this short portion of help you today. But David says this, this, these things here. He says, the Lord is my light, my salvation, my trust, my strength, my life, my confidence, my protector from the wicked, my, my protector from the enemies, my refuge from the multitude, my help in war. That's what David declared that the Lord is. Amen. Amen. So let it be that for you today. Amen. Put your hope and your trust in God. Amen. Not in man, but in God. Amen. Man may tell you many things that they want to do for you, but nobody can do me like the Lord Jesus. Amen. No, can, no one can, can actually do me the way Jesus can do me. Amen. No one can do for me what Jesus can do for me. Amen. No one, amen, can help me like the Lord of Jesus. No one, amen. Think about this here. Nobody can do me like Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Nobody, Nobody can do me like the Lord. And this is what must be when we put our confidence and hope and trust in God and believing and knowing that He is, we say that He is, that He do what He said He would do. Why should you fear? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That's what David has said. Here. Why should you fear? Why should you fear? Amen. Amen. Why? Should you fear? Don't let fear rob you. Yeah. Don't let fear prevent you from moving forward. Amen. Don't let fear prevent you from enjoying the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. 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 So I know sometimes you have to put a little side note and they say, well, you know, I ain't telling you God to be crazy. But I'm telling you to have crazy faith. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Trust in the Lord. Amen. Trust Him. Now, Facebook, only the Lord knows. Amen. 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 Only the Lord knows the time and the hour of your departure. Yes. David was letting us know there. They may come upon you, they may come all around you. But he's letting you know they would not prevail. Amen. Amen. He said, the weapons may be formed, mm -hmm. but they will not prosper. Amen. Understanding that. Amen? Amen? Understanding that. And likewise, the YouTube, for those that are on Facebook, go to Bishop Kenny Berry's Facebook page, uh, um, YouTube page and subscribe to it. Amen? Um, we're going to be putting our message there as well. And just knowing this here, that the Lord God Almighty, that he is a great God that he still does what he said he would do. Not one time God has promised him that it has not come past. Amen. Can you not trust a God like that? Put more God, trust in God than you're doing chairs. Amen. 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 Trust him and see what he would do. God bless you and keep it till next time.